My older brother, Zach, is 19 years old. He suffers from epilepsy. I get up a little after six in the morning and start to try to wake Zach up. It's time to wake up. It's really hard to wake him up in the morning. He loves to sleep. He walks with assistance. He has no verbal Zachary, skills. I'll give you a couple minutes, but you gotta wake up. He had to have a G tube, a feeding tube put in a couple of years ago. And, you know, he is the more severe case of epilepsy. Typically, the routine is. I do this, get his clothes out, get everything out, and Jen gets here around 6.30, 4 or 7. She lately has been getting him dressed because I hurt my back. Because of his ongoing seizures, it's such an interruption of his flow of learning and able to do different things. So we get four of these cans a, a day. But he's starting to eat again, so like mashed potatoes and stuff like that. So once he gets his calorie intake up, we can back off a little bit on the formula. Still 19 years old, still wearing diapers. Come on. Auntie's getting the wet face cloth. His nurse, Jen, gets Come to the on. house 6.30. It's like getting a little drunken soldier already. Huh? You're going to fight the war with Mr. Jones. Ready? You ready? We're going to stand. We're going to stand up now. Come on, Ragdoll. Right, yes. You have to stay sitting up, OK? OK, this is Zach's favorite thing to do. Yeah, this is really good. You ready, Zach? We're going to brush your teeth. Mm, sorry. He's gonna fake gag in a minute. Go blub blub. You go blub blub blub. Go in the hot tub. Go in the hot tub and relax. All right, you wanna go in your chair? The bus is gonna be here any minute. Zach was about six weeks old, and I was at a wedding shower for a friend of mine, and he was sleeping, and he kind of woke up, and his mouth got real wide, and his eyes got real wide, and it was followed by a tremor, and I had never seen a seizure before. When we took him to the doctors, uh, we realized that uh, Zachary had epilepsy. We didn't know how severe at the time. As a firstborn, it was something that we uh, had to get used to. Ever since, it's been it's been an adventure. Zach's 19 now, so he'll be turning 20 in April. I've known him for six years now. On any given day, his body looks like it's cutting out on him, but he's trying to find a way of something he can do. Keep walking. My goal has always been safety first. So he comes to school, keep him safe, see how his day is going, and then try to keep him, you know, get him involved. What do you know what? Every day is different with Zach. It depends on whether he's had a seizure the night before or if he is getting sick. There are some days that we come in and I'll put him in the stander, but he'll be sleeping. Oh, boy. Or he won't eat for days, so he has a G tube that he has to get his feeds through there. People that have epilepsy and live so called normal life. Unfortunately, most of those people don't advocate for themselves and they kind of keep it a secret. It's had that stigma attached to it where people don't want to disclose. <laughs> He's like, this is way too early. That's one of the reasons why there's not a lot of research. We are really trying to focus more on why. Zach has definitely declined in a lot of areas. How are we doing today, Zachary? 
And at one point, he was actually walking by himself. Not far, but he would take maybe 10 steps by himself. Actually, one night when we moved into this house, I heard a crash in the middle of the night. He actually came from his bedroom out into the living room, and I, he was standing holding on to the side of the couch. <laughs> that was probably about seven years ago. He's got the lean, though. Yeah. He's got a heavy. He's got a heavy duty lean today. He's just falling forward. Yeah. It's on Fridays, I go to the swimming pool. I fought for that because I really thought that it was important for them to get a different kind of activity in their day. You know, he's not as tense when he's in the water. He has a flotation device where he can be pretty independent, where he can walk and you don't have to worry about him falling over, so it gives him a chance to be free. You can just see he has better flexibility in the water. You can take his arms and kind of you know, do this with it where he's not so you know, cortical because he, he spends a lot of his day like this. I'm gonna walk to the table. Come on. When he has PT, Jean will come in and she'll work. You know, I work with her. He'll do his ball exercises, stretching. We'll start sitting. There you go. Just like Is he snarling? <laughs> <laughs> Are you snarling, Zach? Yep. Yeah, you're getting the look. Oh. Yeah, this is one of his least favorite activities, so I figured we'd do it right away. Good job, Zach. Good sitting. Good sitting. Big, big, big stretch. <gasps> Hey, nice looking. Yes, it's me, your favorite torturer. We're gonna make the coffee now. We're gonna make the coffee. The smell of the coffee um, is really good for Zach. It kind of wakes him up. Oh, that smells good. Yes, that <laughs> smells good. We're gonna pour the beans into the grinder. Your arms are so nice and relaxed here. We're working it. on expanding his communication attempts and successes. That smells so good. Go ahead, buddy. Gonna grind those beans. We have a vibrating switch plate that he can hit, and because of that vibration, that cause and effect, mm -hmm. that would initiate him to actually want to hit the plate. go. Nice watching. Two. Zachary has cortical visual impairment, which means that his visual impairment is with processing of what he sees. Like this background here would not work for him. It has to be a black background or a solid white background so that he can distinguish between what it is that you want him to look at and what is around him. Three. This is my fifth year with Zachary. Um, he's come a long, long way. Four great, four scoops. All right, Zach, we're going to bring it back and see if it's done. Then they'll go and sell it at the cart. So he has a chance to communicate with other kids by hitting a Big Mac switch. Pre-recorded message by one of his classmates. You want some coffee? I would love some coffee, Zach. Oh, you're making her day. Thank you, buddy. When he was a baby, he had too many seizures to even count, probably 50 a day. Now he has grandma seizures, and he probably has two to three a week. With his grandma seizures, it takes him a couple of days to really kind of come out of it and come back to where he can do things like this. Believe it or not, I think his body has actually gotten used to it. He fell over the weekend, had a seizure, and smacked his head on the carpet when he was at his dad's house. We've been to the hospital in Providence, we've been to Boston, we've been to New York, Detroit, UCLA Medical Center a couple of times for different testing. Sometimes the medications that they put the children on are worse than the seizures. So this is the first two years of his life we tried all these medications and none of them worked. A lot of it we would have to chop up and put in applesauce when he was a baby. We also tried injections that I had to give him every day. And it wasn't just like a little diabetic needle, it was like a huge 
needle and he just like cried from the minute he woke up until the minute he went to bed. As a parent, you, it breaks your heart because you know that you're trying to help him, uh, but you also know that it's not either working for him or it's uh, making him feel worse than what he is already. And I really feel like that particular drug took his personality away. Mashed potatoes, carrots, and squash. You want to eat? Show me. You want to eat? Mm. Yeah. It's your favorite thing. Mm. Mm. Yummy, yummy. What's the job? Come on. You said you were hungry. So. Come on. Mm. Last year was kind of a, a tough year because all my friends that have kids his age were all packing up to go to college. So they were all telling, going to Bed Bath and Beyond and linens and things, and mm. I'm going to uh, get diapers and formula. I try not to dwell on that too much, but that was, a, that was tough. Yeah, we try to give Zach an opportunity to utilize his bike daily. I, I don't like to keep him in his chair, so he really likes the bike, gets him moving. He's usually happy when he's in his bike. I got one for you, Zach. Bowling, the thing that I like about it is it's something that he can do. Because we have a modified ramp that would sit in his lap. So the ball was basically in his lap and then he would just be required to, you know, kind of give it a push. There it is. Yeah! I, I don't know if it's the actual sport itself that he likes or it's the fact that he's with his peers. You know, that whole socialization piece is really big for him. The best way for Zach to learn is by pairing an object so he has a texture, the word itself of whatever the activity is, and then, you know, preferably an auditory feedback. And we try to do that with all of the activities for him. It's by pairing and using multiple intelligences. And he loves music. If he likes the song, he'll kind of rock out to that song. And when he doesn't like it, he'll stop. And he'll put that little snarl on that you had seen earlier when he didn't like an activity or he didn't like what he was doing. Am I talking about you? Uh, I grew up knowing that he was different. I would see him having seizures and my mom would be all worried. That would be the only difficult part. Whenever I hear like, oh, he can't understand what you're saying, Connor, uh, I know he can. It's just, I've always known that. And I know he's my older brother inside. It's just he has a heart. He can't communicate with me. <laughs> He's usually in his room just listening to music on the radio and just sit with him and talk to him. Do you agree with him, Zach? Yeah. <laughs> and I know he hears me. Of course. I like having him in the school. Everybody wants to help Zach. Everyone wants to be his buddy. And that's, you know, that's really where Zach thrives. But if Zach has a bad day and you know he has a seizure, you throw everything else off to the side and you say, okay, safety first again. And then it's then it's then it's then it's real because this kid's struggling to breathe or you know it's this is who he is. <laughs> you didn't like that, huh? Take it day by day. 
period by period, minute by minute, and just try to enjoy each other. You want music? Yeah, no, get it. No, he wants, okay. He's digging it. No. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to literally mm. spray this with the glue. Okay? Oh, no, I'm going to... Oh, I thought you did that. Nope. Right. And if he wants to dunk his hands in like a wise guy, then... Oh, Got a boy, Zach. <laughs> Come on, get messy. <laughs> Come on. You need to pat that down. Come on. I know you don't like this, but it's good for you. If he's having a good day, all these little mm. things come out. Mm -hmm. And you feel like he's kind of like locked inside sometimes. We've tried everything and nothing has worked for him. So with the blessing of his doctors, we agreed to not even have him on any medication because nothing works. Over time, it seems like he has more not so good days than good days. I can't emphasize enough how important the research is because when I look at him, it, to me it just seems like there's a kid inside trapped. Epilepsy gets very little funding. If you take Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism, and MS per patient, they get 200 to $400 per person, and epilepsy research gets about $35 per patient. And it's not really getting any better. Ultimately, we want a cure because this is just a Band-Aid, if anything. Hopefully through research, we can find out more about the human brain. The human brain is, is one of the most complex things in the human body. Every day, every year, they make new breakthroughs and to make sure that, that money can be used the best toward childhood epilepsy. The dream would be for my brother to be cured. I want other families not to have to go through this every day. I definitely want to go to Brown University and become a neurologist and study the brain and maybe even, I don't know if I could do this, but try and help to reverse the gene and help find a cure too. We don't know Zachary's lifespan. Mm. Look at the baby on the beach. Mm. You used to sleep so good on the beach, Zach. Mm. We take every day with Zachary with a blessing. We're uh, concentrating with the quality of life for Zachary and making him as comfortable as possible. I try not to think too far ahead. He's got two more years of school and then, I don't know, he's always gonna live at home with me. He's never gonna go, you know, to live in a group home as long as I can take care of him. 